Hi, today I'll be doing a uh, short presentation on convinced function, and then uh, we'll finish with the uh, Jensen equality and uh, the following proof. So first, uh, let's define what is a uh, what makes a function convex. So a real value function phi on an open interval is said to be convex, provided that for each point, each pair of point x1 and x2 in that open interval, and for a lambda, which is between 0 and 1, we have the following inequality. Remark that if x1 is less than x2 in the open interval a and b, then for every x inside x1 and x2, we have the following representation, where lambda is equal to x2 minus x divided by x2 minus x1. Right, so all we have to do is solve for lambda, and then we get this. So that's pretty trivial. We have the following proposition. If phi is differentiable on a and b, and the derivative is increasing, the phi is convex. If the, if the derivative is increasing, then we know that um, on the open interval, then we know that the second derivative is uh, non-negative on that open interval. It's this equivalent statements. So then we'll prove the first statement. Let the pair x1 and x2 be in the open, tempo, open interval a and b such that x1 is less than x2. And let x be in the open interval x1 and x2. If we apply the mean value theorem, theorem to phi for each interval, so the uh, closed interval x1 to x and x to x2, we choose a pair of points c1 and c2 such that c1 is the in the first interval and c2 is in the second open interval, such that we have that the derivative of uh, phi at the point c1 is equal to phi x minus 5x1 divided by x minus x1, and then the derivative of phi at c2 is phi of x2 minus 5x divided by x2 minus x. Um, so this is just the uh, applying the mean value theorem. So we know that there exists a point S1, C1 in that interval and this point C2 in that interval, such that this is true. And then we know that uh, the derivative of phi is increasing. So uh, we know that this is less than this because C2 is in the uh, interval um, after the interval that this c1 is. And then since this is equal to this, and then this is equal to this, we have that this is equal to this. Now, if you recall that uh, a function phi is convex um, based on that, so that was the first definition that we introduced. And then if we let lambda be the, um, if, we, if we solve for lambda uh, for x equal this, then we get that lambda is equal to this. And then, so now, if x is equal to this, we can rewrite this as this form and then multiply by x2 minus x1 and then uh, a bit of algebra, we get this form. So we get that a function is convex if it has this form and then we also have that the derivative is increasing if it has, um, if this holds, so we see that they're both equivalent. Now we have a new lemma, so if we, um, Based on the, on the previous proposition, um, it's easy seen that if phi is a convex function on an open interval a and b, um, phi has left end and right end derivatives at each point inside that open interval. Um, and then if we take points u and v inside a and b, such that u is less than v, uh, these one-sided derivatives satisfy the following equality. So this is always true. We say that it's, um, it's pretty obvious. This is follows from the uh, the derivative of phi being an increasing function um, and the mean value theorem. So we see that this has to be greater or equal than this uh, because, um, because of the derivative is increasing and then similar why this is less than this and this. And we see that phi is Lipschitz if those. So we're not gonna go through a proof. It's pretty uh, trivial for the Lipschitz uh, show that phi, phi is Lipschitz, all you have to do is multiply by v minus u, and then you see that there, um, phi v minus phi of u is bounded by 
there's certain values this, this is um strictly yeah this is a uh, um, bounded and this is also bounded so then if you multiply v minus two there's a constant take the max of two and then um, that's pretty much it and then to show that the um the, it has a left and right and derivatives um using uh, we see that in this form if uh if we replace x by x plus h and then there's divided by h x here um, we see that uh, it exists for uh, for all the points inside of it, uh, a and b okay so now we have a, a new theorem um, and then this one a uh, new property for convex function is that if phi is convex on the open interval uh, if phi is differentiable except at phi then phi is differentiable except at a countable number of points and its derivative is an increasing function. Okay, so um, from the previous demo, we can recall that um, the derivative is uh, increasing on A and B. And we've already shown previously in the class that uh, if we have a mo monotonic function and it's continuous everywhere except, then it's continuous everywhere except at a countable number of points. And we'll count, we'll, um, we'll count, We'll call that the the that subset C. So that C is the subset of A uh, and B such that um, for the derivative is uh, non-continuous there, and uh, that subset is countable and has measure uh, therefore has measure zero also. So the both the left and the right hand derivatives of phi are continuous except on that point. Now, if we take uh, x naught being inside the um, interval a and b, but not on uh, the subset where its uh, derivative is non-continuous. And we choose a sequence xn such that xn is uh, always greater than x naught for every n inside the natural set, but xn converges to x naught from above. And we use the previous lemma with x naught equal to u, xn equal to v, taking the limits so we get this trivially, and we get this from the uh, from the limit, the convergence of the limit, and then this shows that the derivative, the left hand derivative of uh, at x naught, is equal to the right hand derivative at x naught. Therefore, phi is differentiable at x naught. And if we take q and v in that set again, such that u is less than v. Uh, then we get that uh, the derivative of u is less um, than phi. Uh, the derivative of phi at u is less or equal than the phi of v minus phi of u divided by v minus u, which is less or equal than the derivative of phi at v. Um, so we get that the derivative of phi is an increasing function um, on that set where um, we define that the uh, it is continuous, the function phi is continuous. So wherever the function phi is continuous, the derivative is an increasing function. Now let's call, let's, uh, let's introduce a new uh, definition. So let's have phi being a convex function on the open interval a and b. Let x naught be a point in that interval and let m be um, a real number. Um, we call the line y equal to m times x minus x naught plus 5 x naught, which passes through the point x naught, 5 x naught, right? If you replace x by x naught, this becomes 0, and then y becomes 5 x naught. Such line is called the supporting line at x naught for the graph of phi, providing this line always lie below the graph of phi. That is, 5 x is greater or equal than the supporting line for every x and a b. So, um, I can do a draw here, but if we follow the, the mouse, if we have a convex function, the supporting line will touch the convex function at x, the, this supporting line will touch it at x equal x naught and lies below the graph of phi uh, for all the other points. Now, the main theorem that we wanna show transcends inequality. So let phi be a convex function in the real let f be an integrable function on the closed domain between 0 and 1, and then the composition of phi and f be integrable over uh, 0 and 1, then we have that phi 
uh, the um, the integral between 0 and 1 of f of x is less or equal than the integral of 0 and 1 of the um, composition of phi and f at x, uh, composition of phi and f. OK, so then we'll do the proof. So let, let's uh, let alpha be the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x. And let's choose m uh, being a point between the left and right hand side of uh, the derivative of at alpha. Um, then if we have the supporting line, y equals m times t minus alpha plus uh, phi of alpha, it's the equation of the supporting line at this point for the graph uh, phi, right? Again, t alpha, then we get y equal phi of alpha. So because of the definition of the supporting line, we have that phi of t is greater or equal than the supporting line for every t in the real. Um, since f is integral on between 0 and 1, it is uh, finite almost everywhere between 0 and 1. And we can substitute um, f of x or t. It's actually, we can substitute t for f of x, so there's a small quite small typo here in the above inequality. And we have uh, phi of f of x is greater or equal than m of f of x minus alpha plus uh, phi of alpha for every x in zero, between 0 and 1, because that's where uh, our f is defined. Uh, and then if we integrate across this inequality, and then if we use uh, using the monotonicity of the best integral and the assumption that both f and the composition of phi and f are integrable over uh, domain a and b, we obtain that the integral between 0 and 1 of phi of f of x, which is the composition of phi of f of x, is greater or equal than the supporting line, which is equal to uh, this, which we, we, we can just uh, separate by linearity. And then we get that um, this is 0. And so we all we're left with is phi of a, and then recall that uh, phi of alpha, sorry, and then recall that alpha is the integral from 0 to 1. And then we get this, which is um, this part, and then we had this part here, here. So we show, so the, the theorem is proven. Um, one quick note that is worth, uh, one quick remark that is worth talking about is in, here in the assumption that um, phi of f, uh, the composition of phi and f is integrable. Um, we have that f is integral, uh, an integrable function and phi is convex. So if phi is convex and um, we have that phi is also continuous, and then we have um, that the composition of a, um, uh, the composition of an integrable function in a continuous function uh, is measurable. If the composition is non-negative, then the then it will be integrable. But if it's non-negative, um, then it needs to be bounded by some. Um, th then the absolute value of uh, a phi needs to be bounded by some um, um, by some absolute uh, function. So, so like a function of the form a plus b times the absolute of x. Uh, otherwise, it is um, it is possible that the the composition is non-integrable. Um, so that's it in terms of the the presentation that I wanted to do on comic functions and inequality. I hope that uh, you guys found it instructive. Thank you.